In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome to everybody here at the Church of Jesus, the Living Water in La Mode, in the parish of Our Lady Help of Christians, Bolio in St. George's in Grenada. And to all those joining us on whatever platform, Good News Catholic Radio, the Diocesan Facebook page, or um, whatever else, welcome joining us as together we listen to God's word and offer together the sacrifice of the Mass. Our Mass this morning is specially offered as a Mass of thanksgiving and to ask for God's blessing, for God's strength, guidance, help and protection for our sister Muriel Cador on the occasion of her 91st birthday. Uh, so for a few moments now, as we always do, we call to mind our sins. And we think especially of our sins of pride, the times when we have put selfishness before service, when we have been more concerned about our own status, our power, our sense of control, the times that we have used our authority as a means of self-aggrandizement. We tell God we're truly sorry and ask with great confidence for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This uh, first reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus, sometimes known as the book of Ben Sirach. It was written, it's one of the latest books in the Bible to be written, and it's at least the, pa the passage that we're reading today and some other passages are a prayer for the people of Israel who were in deep trouble at that time. You know, they were suffering under foreign rule. They had been ruled by the Persians and the Assyrians and so on, and later last of all by the Greeks. And after the death of Alexander the Great, um, they were really suffering under the, that, these Greek rulers known as the Seleucid rulers. And they were trying to absorb all the countries into Greek culture and language. And a great persecution started um, against the practice of the Jewish faith. And um, this ultimately led to the revolt, to the rebellion of the Maccabees, the Maccabee family, who led that revolt against the Greek rulers, the Seleucids, but ended up by being invaded by the Romans and having the Romans come in as occupiers. And the Romans were still there in the time of Jesus. So let us listen to this prayer for the people of Israel in their time of trouble. And maybe we can identify with it now in this time of our time of trouble 
here on this earth. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verses 1, 4 to 5, and 10 to 17. Have mercy on us, Master, Lord of all. Look on us, cast the fear of yourself over every nation. Let them acknowledge you, just as we have acknowledged that there is no God but you, Lord. Send new portents, do fresh wonders. Win glory for your hand and your right arm. Gather together all the tribes of Jacob. Restore them the inheritance as in the beginning. Have mercy, Lord, on the people who have invoked your name, on Israel, whom you have treated as a firstborn. Show compassion on your holy city, on Jerusalem, the place of your rest. Fill Zion with songs of your praise, and your sanctuary with your glory. Bear witness to those you created in the beginning, and bring about what has been prophesied in your name. Give those who wait for you their reward, and let your prophets be proved worthy of belief. Grant, Lord, the prayer of your servants in accordance with Aaron's blessing on your people, so that all the earth's inhabitants may acknowledge that you are the Lord, the everlasting God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, have mercy on us, Lord, and look on us. Have mercy on <clears throat> us, Lord, and look on us. Do not hold the guilt of our fathers against us. Let your compassion hasten to meet us, for we are in the depths of distress. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, Lord, Lord and, and look, look on, on us. us. O oh God, our Savior, come to our help. Come for the sake of the glory of your name. O oh Lord, our oh God, forgive us our sins. Rescue us for the sake of your name. Have mercy on us, Lord, and look on us. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you. Let your strong arm reprieve those condemned to die. But we, your people, the flock of your pasture, will give you thanks forever and ever. We will tell your praise from age to age. Have mercy on us, Lord, and look on us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And when anyone obeys what Christ has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The disciples were on the road going up to Jerusalem. Jesus was walking on ahead of them. They were in a daze, and those who followed were apprehensive. Once more taking the twelve aside, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Now we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man is about to be handed over to the chief priests and to the scribes. They will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the pagans, who will mock him and spit on him and scourge him and put him to death, and after three days he will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached him. Master, they said to him, we want, us to do you a we want you to do us a favor. He said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, Allow us to sit, one at your right hand and the other at your left, in your glory. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I must be baptized? They replied, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I must drink, you shall drink, and with the baptism with which I must be baptized, you shall be baptized. But as for seats at my right hand or my left, 
These are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted. When the other ten heard this, they began to feel indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that among the pagans their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to be great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be the slave to all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. So in St. Mark's Gospel, this, what we have just read, is the third time that Jesus spoke to his disciples about his suffering and death. And um, they were very reluctant. They were very reluctant to take it on, as we say. Yes, they heard what he said, and yes, but they still had these ideas of, of glory, of the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. And we don't know what was in their minds, but uh, with regards to the suffering and death, the way in which that glory and that restoration of the kingdom was to be achieved, but um, they, they, weren't, um, they weren't taking on this, this, um, this talk of, of suffering and death. And um, so they still had the attitude and they still had the mentality that maybe there's a bit of it in all of us. The attitude which says, well, what's in it for me? What benefit is this? What am I getting out of this? And, um, and James and John were a bit straightforward about it and they came up to Jesus and asked him, out straight, listen, after this suffering business is over, make, us, make sure we have seats at your right hand and your left. We want to be the senior ministers in the government, um, in the kingdom of God. And, um, you know, in St. Matthew's Gospel and St. Luke's Gospel, Matthew and Luke kind of soften it a little bit. Um, they say that it was their mother the mother of James and John that brought the two brothers to Jesus. But in other words, at the time of writing the Gospels, Matthew, James and John were senior figures in the church, well respected, and this didn't look too good. So Matthew and Luke kind of soften it by emphasizing the role of the mother. But Mark, who wrote the, most, the first of the Gospels, who put things down, Mark wrote things just as they were. He is not a very polished writer or a very educated writer, so he doesn't try to soften anything. He puts it plain and straight. The two brothers came to Jesus and asked for the big jobs. And um, um, so Jesus, when they came to him, Jesus insists that and reminds them and reminds all of them that to be his disciples means entering into his suffering, suffering, death, and resurrection. That was his way, the way of combating wrong with right, falsehood with truth, evil with good, hatred with love. If you follow that way, you must face suffering and misunderstanding and persecution and even death. But that's the way to glory. And this is what Jesus was trying to explain when he spoke about the cup and the, the baptism. And they knew that because he had just been talking about suffering and death. And he said, yes, he said, you don't know what you're asking, but because you don't understand what's the meaning of glory in the kingdom of God. And what he's trying to say and what he is telling them is that greatness is not in that kind of power and authority and dignity and um, and, and being res respected, being looked up to. Pa real service of Jesus, real authority, is given for service. So authority is not for one's self-glory. Authority is not for yourself. Authority is for those who are under that authority. So parents, you're th the little children that you have, your children are not your little slaves and servants. Your authority over them is for their benefit. The same with teachers. 
the little children, your authority over the children is for the good of the, t uh, for the children and for the service of the children. And that must involve suffering sometime and maybe even humiliation sometimes. And when we come then to religious authority, priests and bishops, we have to be especially careful because we dress up in all kinds of nice clothes and we like to be called Father and my Lord. And, and if, if we take that, well, I'm afraid that's the sin of pride and vanity, that we must realize that whatever authority I have as a priest, whatever authority bishops have, is for the service of the people, is for service to, to you. And if we use these, if I use my, the, the, the dignity that I have and the, as the respect that I get as a priest, if I think that's something that applies to me personally, and if I take it and, and, and use it for, to build myself up, and then that's the sin of pride and the sin of vanity on my part. And I have to apologize, and I must apologize and beg forgiveness if I have ever done that. And um, can't say if I have ever done it, I'm sure I am guilty of that many, many times. So priesthood and all authority is for service. Now, certainly within the priesthood, sometimes um, people take that very seriously and they go a bit too far and they even abuse it and exploit it. But that's part of the suffering that we have to put up with. So just pray for those in authority. I haven't even mentioned those with civil authority, those with political authority, but the same thing applies there too, service and not for self-aggrandizement. So pray for all authority, pray for parents, pray for teachers, pray for religious leaders especially, and pray also for those with political authority, so that that authority be used for the benefit, the, the good of the people over whom it is exercised, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, having listened to our lies, we put our needs, our need for humility, our need for the generosity of your people. Lord, we pray for political authority, all those great power over others, all those world leaders, Lord, who have power, power to send destruction. Lord, we ask you to touch their hearts and touch their minds, the power, power to send destruction. Lord, we ask you to touch their hearts and touch their Heavenly Father, we place these and all the unspoken prayers of our hearts before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For my he needs no praise, no honor to his only motto to your own self be true. Happy the man who learns how to pray. Happy the man who has a burning goal. Happy the man whose service needs no pain. This man has sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the elements for the praise and glory of his name, for all of the good and good of all those who should O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Clyde Martin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to, co we may merit to, be co co -heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen to the Father. Amen to the Son. Amen to the Spirit. All three in one. And now at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let's just offer a little, little nod, a little wave, a little smile as a sign of peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring everlasting life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. <coughs> Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your and may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And have a blessed rest of the day, everybody. I have made a covenant with my chosen, given my servant my word. Made your name to last forever, built to outlast all time. I will celebrate your love forever, Yahweh. Angel, my words proclaim your love, for I claim that love is built to last forever. From There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. 
a reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Diocese of St. George's in Grenada, the faithful are happy to return to our churches, our places of worship, where we share fellowship and participate in the greatest gift Jesus left us, the Holy Eucharist. The coronavirus pandemic kept us away for a long time, but we've reopened the church using the government's recommended guidelines. Everyone is expected to sanitize their hands on entering the church. This must be done at the designated entry where you must register your attendance. The church must supply a list of attendees to the Ministry of Health to enable contact tracing should someone become infected with COVID. Proceed quickly to your seats where the six foot distance must be maintained unless you live in the same household. Keep your mask on at all times. Avoid as far as possible touching surfaces like benches, seats, etc. Unless otherwise advised, the faithful walk in the main aisle to offer their gifts and return via the side aisles. An usher will direct you to prevent unnecessary physical contact. Please remember, there should be no physical contact at the sign of peace. We proceed to the altar to receive the Holy Eucharist. We maintain our physical distance and receive the body of Christ in our left hand. Step aside, and using your right hand, remove the right handle of the mask. Place the host in your mouth, and replace the handle of the mask. At the end of the mask, please leave with urgency through all available exits, and avoid congregating in the aisles and outside the church. Love your neighbor, keep your distance, wear your mask, wash your hands. 